Well, then you all should then you all should have gotten your stuff together before then. Some in our juries, please. Some in our juries. Have a seat, madam. Have a seat. My colleagues in federal court would probably jail most of you. And for those of you that have practiced in federal court, this is not the way it goes. Day 61 and 62 of the Young Thug YSL Rico trial were intense. The victim of Walter DK's attempted murder testifies and half his head is missing. Later on, the judge yells at the defense and the state for not agreeing on evidence being admitted in trial. The state keeps trying to add stuff they know the defense is going to object to and it delays the trial. That's what's happening. The judge pops off. It's hectic today. Hit subscribe. Here we go. Motion in limine that was granted. It says, after hearing from the parties on February 27th, Brian Steele on behalf of Mr. Williams, this honorable court hereby grants Mr. Williams motion in limine number 39 and no victim impact evidence shall be admissible as trial raised by Mr. Williams. First look at Thug on day 61. That's a sick turtleneck he got on right there. Little Rod laughing about something. <laughs> Max Sharp's been having the mask on lately. I don't know why. Maybe maybe he just feels sick or something. He's just not risking it. Uh, and I apologize for the late notice because no, you are correct. Ridiculous. That's ridiculous. I mean, come on now, really? I sat here last night before we left. Anything else gotta take up? Anything else gotta take up? Prompting everybody. And I, I mean, it is, it is, it's not gotcha lawyering at this point in time. Because remember when I told you the people in the sit in the box as you said, the longer that they go, the more that it's more difficult for other things that are unintended to happen. So I guess Mr. Weinstein right here is objecting to some sort of pictures of uh, Montgomery, the guy that got his head shot by a uh, nard. We need to keep them happy and we need to also keep them involved and engaged. Them waiting on us is not being involved and engaged. It's I, not. I agree with that completely, Your Honor. And again, I apologize. But once I came to that realization last night. I uh, felt, after a year of considering this issue? Uh, yes, Your Honor. After coming to that realization last night, I just believe that I had to file that request of the court and I could not let it lie. I should absolutely have come up with that earlier. Okay, all right, your motion's denied, sir. All right, anything else? Motion's denied that quickly and here we go. Mr. Montgomery's about to come in. Huh? Okay, all right. So Montgomery's not being filmed, obviously. I mean, this guy's been through a lot. He got shot in the fucking head. His life's completely changed. He's having seizures a lot now. Half his head is missing. Mr. Montgomery, how old are you, sir? Oh, 35. Mr. Montgomery, could you tell the members of the jury why you're here today? I'm going to seek justice for my, my injury, for my, um, my gunshot wound. And Mr. Montgomery, is this your first time coming to court to talk about what happened to you? It is. Now, Ms. Montgomery, I want to talk to you about your life before you got shot, okay? Okay. Okay. Can you tell the jury where you were born and raised? Say again, sir. In Atlanta, Georgia. Hold on. I was born and raised here in Atlanta, Georgia. Hold on, Mr. Montgomery, let me say. What sports did you play? Football. What position did you play? Defense union. I woke up. I was in the house. My grandma, I was in the house. My grandma said she wanted something from, something from the store. And I asked her what she want. And I asked, and I told her I would go to the store and get it for her. And my little cousin was in the house and he had a vehicle and I didn't. So I told him, to, so if I can get a ride, I asked him if I can get a ride to the store because we live near the store to, uh, to get my grandma something, what she wanted from the store near the area. And he was going up that way. So I asked him if he could drop me off on, to the store on the way up there to get grandma what she needed from the store. I was in the, I was in the passenger side and that's when I got shot. I was in the car. Do you remember the type of car y'all was in? Yes. What type of car was that? A Camaro. Did you go to the hospital? I did. You know how long you stayed in the hospital? I don't. Were you recently in the hospital? I was. And why were you recently in the hospital? Asthma. And a seizure, and seizures. Okay. I have seizures because of the gunshot. Now. How frequently do you have those seizures? Um, maybe about, uh, like a couple every month. Do you recall anything while you guys were at the sitcom? No. Did you have any kind of beef or anything with anyone? No. No. Do you know a person named DK? No. Do you know a person named OG Bentley? No. Do you know a person by the name of Walter Murphy? No. Have you ever had any kind of contact with any of those individuals? No. Nope. All right. Just have a few questions for you, please, about what you just testified to. Atlanta police detectives coming to your house uh, and asking you questions about the incident. No. Do you have any recollection whatsoever of meeting with anyone at your house and indicating that you have absolutely no memory of anything that happened on that evening, either before, during, or after the incident? No. No one contacted you to talk no. about any resolutions? No. No one contacted you no. regarding no. anything? No. I just said no. Okay. Thank you, sir. This, this witness is kind of hard to even ask him questions on cross. You can't even really ask a lot of questions. This guy, he's a victim and his life has completely changed forever. I forgot to ask you, can you tell the jury where you got shot? What body part? My head. Can you show the jury the, jury the portion of your head where you got shot? Where, you, where the dinny is. You can see the marks right there. The staples and stitches right there. Where the dent is, there's no skull there. This is intense, bro. He said where the dent is, there's no skull there. Like, Jesus, bro. Such a dumb shooting. Now, keep in mind, this wasn't anyone in the courtroom that did this. This was Nard and DK being reckless and trying to rob people with assault rifles, but they all pretty intense and the jury sees this, so. It makes me not have one. It makes, me, it makes my memory go in and out. And do you remember leaving the sickle and being shot? No, I told you we didn't make it to the sitcom. We, well, I shot before we made it to the sitcom. Mr. Montgomery, is that a photo of you before? It is. Mm-hmm. About how old were you at the time? I have no idea. Probably about, maybe about 14, 15. Showing the jury a before and after of what he looks like now compared to back then, obviously. No one in the courtroom instructed DK and Nard to go shoot this guy. That's my issue with this. Like it's a, It seems like a lot of these incidents are separated crimes of individuals, and they just so happen to be YSL members. And that's how RICO works. Like That's all they have to prove is they were a part of a gang and they committed crimes. But was it in furtherance of YSL is the question. Oh! Mr. Montgomery, I'm now showing you what's been admitted as four rival rivalries. 
It's me. Great, have a representation of yourself? It is. Is this after you were uh, shot? Yes. I think so. I'm not sure. I think I heard you say, Mr. Montgomery, that uh, the DA's office spoke to you recently or within the past few months about a case. Is that right? No, you didn't hear me say that. No. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, they didn't contact you back in 2015. Is that right? Right. Did they ever notify you um, that the person who was uh, convicted of shooting you, uh, Mr. Walter Murphy, had been there, struck a deal with him? No. They never told you that either? No. All right. Thank you. I control certain things, okay? And that's the, just the housekeeping, okay? The witness here, the seat was soiled. That's what had to be cleaned. Sergeant Ingram is the person that noticed that, and we took care of that. So I think we can leave it at that point. Oh, this is sad. The guy, the guy. Went to the bathroom on the seat. Oh my God, that's that's insane. Wow, that's really sad. I just want the record to reflect since it's not gonna be on camera. When the state called Mr. Montgomery, he came into the courtroom. He was not already seated in the um, witness chair and he came in the courtroom and my word would be shuffled in with a cane type uh, object, like a, um, a, a, a stick type of cane. Staff. A staff, okay. Um, and he sat down with the help of a victim witness slash investigator from the Fulton County DA's office who sits often in your courtroom on the district attorney's side, comes up at times, talks with the district attorney who's closest to the jury. The first question from the honorable prosecutor was something to the effect of whatever record shows, tell us why you're here, I want justice for the people who did this. Whatever the quote is, I don't remember, but it's something to that. I then asked to approach. The next question was also victim impact, your honorable court stated that try the case, that leave out victim impact, we appreciate that. And then when we're leaving, when the witness was asked to leave, he was struggling, my, my view, he was struggling to get up and he was being helped again by the investigator with DA's office in front of the jury. A juror actually got up and gave room. Um, I just want the record to reflect all that because you you already ruled no victim impact and it was breached, my word would be intentionally, by DA's office. Um, and I believe that that goes against what we're doing here. I saw a witness who had physical limitations come in our courtroom, who was helped by the DA's office and our sheriff's team to sit down. And that was the only thing that I believe that the record should reflect in craft. So, and to leave. And to leave. And I think that that would be appropriate for any witness that we have, Mr. Steele. So I'll note it for the record, but I'm just putting on what the court observed. And uh, is there anything else? Um, the only other issue is the state, um, I say intentionally violate the court's order, leave out victim impact. Okay, but I've already, I already ruled upon that, so. I ruled upon motion limine, granted, they do it, you tell them not to do it, I mean. But you objected appropriately and I, and I ruled on it, so. So the judge shot that down, but Steele was obviously saying that the state intentionally showed victim impact in front of the jury, hug on the heartstrings of the jury. As a crime scene tech, I am to respond to emergency calls, process crime scenes as they happen. So this lady worked the crime scene of the shooting of the guy that got shot in the head. So I would imagine they're going to show pictures to the jury. The The reason why Steele objected all that was because the guy didn't remember shit and he was wrong about never reaching the gas station before being shot. He he did get to the gas station. Steele wanted to avoid this type of victim impact being shown to the jury. The judge let it happen. You're looking at the street in front of 1987 Fremont. Oh, they're sharing the car with blood all in it and everything. I'm going to have to blur this. That hat, uh, can you tell the jury, is that one of the items that uh, you collected and took in the evidence based on your report? It is. The hat he was wearing when he got shot in the head is just covered in blood. So they're just showing the jury all these pictures she took of the car with blood in it, of the crime scene from when Nard shot Mr. Montgomery. Definitely going to have to blur this one. I mean, there's just blood everywhere. Wayne Carter making a statement about uh, don't listen to uh, the person who dresses on his album cover naked who doesn't dress his album cover. Um, things of that nature, and that would be based on your ruling yesterday, just hearsay. Oh, uh, Lil Wayne's made fun of Thug's uh, album cover, where Thug was trying to name his album Barter 6, and that's where their beef started. And he was naked on the album cover, Wayne made fun of it. If they end up convicting Thug, this is going to be the easiest appeal ever. This trial has been so mismanaged by this judge, it's not even fucking funny. First look at Thug on day 62. I believe that there's a hearsay statement that's completely irrelevant made by investigator Dennis. Prior statements are not just played to the jury. No noticed throughout this trial that the state that is the way their preferred me method of impeaching their own witnesses if we're going to proceed on that method which i don't necessarily agree with um i just think we need to clean up those two small areas how long have you had this particular recording mr shark i've, I've had it for over a, a year why the why the motion at this point in time then you could have filed this as a motion months ago. I wouldn't think that we were going to just. I, no, no, that's not the. That's not the point. If if you think something's going to come up, I didn't think it would come up. Why didn't we file this stuff months ago and let's wind it out and air it out at that point in time? Okay. I'm going to ask the state their their issue on this. Are you are you uh, are you cutting this out? Did you have discussions with Mr. When? That's too late. The evidence is excluded. The evidence is excluded. I'm going to exclude. I'm going to exclude because I told you that this was going to happen. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No, 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 no,
We're excluding that. So he's punishing the state because they discussed this the day that they're going to talk about it in court. And he's been warning them for months that y'all need to be figuring shit out like weeks or months in advance. We can't do this the same day because then it delays the fucking trial. You're not going to you're not going to wholesale introduce it. We, we had no intention. Not All right. To speak right we not to introduce. But you all should not be identifying this stuff the moment of trial while the jury's sitting in a box. And this is the last I'm not going to I'm not going to. I am not going to tolerate this any further. If you don't get together with your colleagues and flag issues and, and, and resolve them promptly, and if I have to take them up, remember, I can exclude them, we'll work the weekends, or we'll do a combination of both. So this time, I'm going to exclude, I'm going to exclude, I'm going to exclude that, those two sections. Well, then you all should, then you all should have gotten your stuff together before then. Some of our juries, please. Some of our juries. Have a seat, madam. Have a seat. You better exclude that, and next time, make sure you're prepared. Make sure you're prepared next time. I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm just not. We are starting right now. It's 120. So then file a motion and get it before me, and and we'll and we'll take it up. Both of you, both both of you all, both of you all have equally responsibility to do that. Oh, it's going to be inadmissible right now. I am not gonna. I am not gonna have any. I'm not gonna have any more discussion about this, madam. I'm not. Holy shit, Miss Love's not giving up, but she needs to immediately. Why is the judge like still letting her yap? Miss Love never accepts her L's. I've watched 60 days of this trial. If something doesn't go her way, she yaps for minutes on end. I'm not punishing anybody, but you know, pr but prior preparation prevents poor performance. Two weeks, y'all. Well, and I have asked, I have said, I would like to discuss it. Our jury's coming in, madam. Our jury's coming in. Have a seat. This might be the biggest fight I've seen in this courtroom. Like him just saying, nope, shut up. The jury's coming in. My boy Thug looking like Santa Claus. So they just keep showing pictures of the crime scene of when Montgomery got shot in the head at first. Looks like Mr. Adams up for cross with this crime scene technician. You were there to document and collect evidence, true? Yes. You thought that's what you that's what you were doing at that point. That was your role, correct? Correct. And the only thing that you know is that there are things at that you got to document and take pictures of, correct? Correct. So he's just downplaying her whole job. Like saying she just showed up to take pictures. You're not a detective, right? Right. Uh, you wouldn't be charged with talking to individuals, correct? Correct. When you got to Fremont, the vehicle already had a defect in it, true? Yes. All right. I realized bro got a bow tie on. You don't know how the vehicle got from Brownsville to the Fremont location, right? Right. So Mr. Adams is pointing out everything she doesn't know in front of the jury. You don't know what anyone inside of the vehicle was doing at the time that that bullet came into the studio. No. You just took the photographs of the vehicles that had some damage to them, yes? Correct. All right, Max Shard's up for cross now too. And to your knowledge, no law enforcement <laughs> ever searched inside 1987 Fremont Avenue in search of any guns that may have been discarded there, did they? Right. I'm gonna object. I asked to her knowledge. The cause for speculation. I'm of any law enforcement searching the house for discarded firearms. Judge one let neither one of those questions fly. I, I, with all due respect to you, madam, and you, and you, your witness, you did ask, okay? But at this point in time, I'm inclined no. I'm inclined not to, not to at this point. We were asking for that consideration that was given to a similar witness in her position who is still afforded the protection of the shield. I, I certainly don't want to put anyone in a particular position, position of um, being. Um, targeted. targeted. There's no evidence of anyone being targeted. The lawyers ask these witnesses these questions. There's no evidence of anyone ever being targeted. So I mean, I get why these people don't want their faces out there, but tell me what date it was tendered. That's not the point. I know that I'm looking for that. They gave them this document this morning. Oh my God, this judge is going to pop off again right here, dude. I, I brought up the issue last week about, or actually on Monday, I believe about uh, investigator Robinson and the issue of an internal affairs investigation and yes i remember that ordered the state and the state indicated that they may very well go into that and you ordered the state to hand over all files that would be brady material and hand them over to the uh, hand them over to the defense we have not received any of those files yet so i just wanted to bring that to your attention in case the state starts getting into trying to get into some of those things that that we have not received anything as we won't be getting into that person at all at any point today either so I would, it still needs to be turned over so mr shard you just so another thing that didn't turn over holy shit, the state is fumbling mr shard in his motion 
asked for a particular portion involving Mr. Murphy to be redacted. Now Mr. Steele is asking for it to be in. We, we took it out. We already did the proper. We already we sent over the redactions as ordered by the court. So Mr. Sharp wanted something redacted, but Thug's lawyer, Brian Steele, doesn't want it redacted. That we be allowed to stay as late as need be and to come as early as need be to address these matters so that our cases are impacted negatively by any efforts of people that are different than we are. So I'm asking for that, Your Honor. <sighs> This judge is so over that, the long side pause. I'm gonna dismiss the jury for today. Sorry, Ingram. Summon our jurors, please. He's, he took a long sigh and pause and said, we're just missing the jury, bro. The challenge that we've been having thus far is that if there is a disagreement, I have to take it up. Evidence or information has existed in discovery for the longest period of time. And what irritates the court is that I have to keep stopping. It's not personal irritation or otherwise. It's just that I told you many times before that this jury in the box, it, we should present and try and minimize disruption. Really trying to work yourselves into working on the weekend. Because that's the only way I'm going to be able to get through this stuff is that I'm going to have to excuse this jury and we're going to work on the weekend to get this done. None of you would do this if you were in the United States District Court. None of you. My colleagues in federal court would probably jail most of you. I, and for those of you that have practiced in federal court, this is not the way it goes. From the state's perspective, as well as the defense perspective, everything's filed in advance. So why should you do anything less than in this courtroom? But it's the state that always sends discovery late and it's stuff that would never come into court so that it's almost like they're intentionally doing it. What's the basis for its admission? Why do I need to hear it? I can read it and say, I can read it and tell you it's probably, it probably doesn't have anything to do with what, what, what we're, what we're covering. It's not relevant. How is, how is somebody about this conversation relevant for anything? What does the carjacking of a federal agent have anything to do with it? Chunks of information be excluded without hearing the chunks of information and allowing the state the opportunity to point out the portions where we disagree. We're not, we're not going through what we're going through this morning, Ms. Love. I'm sorry. I am sorry. We're not doing that. I excluded that because I had made my ruling on that ticket issue. So I'm not going back and talking about that. Judges pop it off today. I already ruled that we, that we were going to exclude that particular portion. I ruled on it because we had argument on it. So are those particular portions admissible? Which portion? For talking about Mr. White or for what we're talking, what Mr. We're talking about right talking now? About? We have to go look at the earlier portion. What we have in the earlier portion of this statement, I believe it's the August 18th statement that we're referencing. I want you to go further in the sense of you need to review your evidence before then and realistically kind of look at this in terms of whether or not it's going to be admissible. But I mean, it's not, it's not like, that's what I'm talking to you about. We have filed motions and I have been filing motions. The things that I filed in those motions are legal arguments that I never thought I would have to make because I did not think the state would ever try to admit such evidence. I said this like 30 minutes ago. I've heard another lawyer say this in the case and I feel like that's the truth. Like they keep at, trying to add shit that they know will never be able to, to be added. Law school, we all know what hearsay is. We all know what inadmissible evidence is. We all know what irrelevant evidence is. We all know that we wouldn't play recordings that talk about unrelated crimes, wholly unrelated crimes. We all know that we wouldn't play recordings where people say what other people said. I was not trying to be disrespectful to the court by waiting to the last minute. I didn't think it was necessary to say, I want the state to follow the rules of evidence in the presentation of this case. I am now on notice and I will be flagging everything I can think of and, and try to have a happy judge. <laughs> There's actually no fucking way this is the audio we're arguing about. You can't even understand a single fucking word they're saying. This trial is fucking stupid. Why is the state trying to add audio like this that you can't even hear with, understand what they're saying at all? Zero. So shout out Thugger Daily again. Great Twitter. Uh, Mr. Copeland, who is Woody, who snitched killed Mr. Thomas. The state redacted uh, exculpatory Brady evidence that Copeland, not a co-indictee, killed Mr. Thomas. And this is not speculation if it is a co-conspirator hearsay. Brian still wants it in because he thinks it's exculpatory to Thug. Shart doesn't want it in. Uh, Walter Murphy said the sky was blue. And then on the stand, he said it was red, but he said it was blue to Investigator Gaither. Investigator Gaither, when you spoke to Walter Murphy on January 1st, 2023, didn't he say the sky was blue? And then that's how they get in the prior inconsistent statement. I don't really understand why we're playing just these lengthy tapes to impeach people because it's not focused on the inconsistent statements. But the other, these other conversations, and then talking about uh, other crimes, about improper statements about other people, uh, but, they, but, they, but they, need to be, they need to be excised. They're not relevant. They're not relevant. The jury's going to decide that. The jury, the jury is going to decide that particular issue, but I'm telling you, you get into more problems. You get into more problems offering this particular state. You just do. That is impeachment by prior inconsistent statement. There it is right there. I don't understand respectfully why we are putting in a videotape to impeach by prior inconsistent statement. I can tell you, Honor, why. Because the videotape shows his demeanor, shows the circumstances, the environment under which he made that prior statement, and the context in which he made that prior statement. It so does. having... It does, Mr. Sharp. So it does. It does. But but I would I would concur that some of this stuff here is not is not relevant. It's not. And we, we, we don't have a problem taking it out. But when he sat there on that stand and said he doesn't remember anything he said, yeah, and even one, after he that's one thing. That's one relationship to other uncharged crimes or whatever else or anything else is not really admissible. 
That's fine. We can do that. All right. So the judge is getting rid of all of it. This wasted two hours of my fucking life <laughs> sitting here. Mr. Kokomo, would you play at four minutes, 30 seconds? Hold on, Miss Love. Would you play at four minutes and 30 seconds and then the 10 no. minute, t the 10 second clip plays no. and then we move on to another subject? No. Or are we, Miss Love, I'm asking the judge a question, okay? Yeah, he is. Why is she still yapping? Because I just don't think that's appropriate impeachment by prior consistent statement. It needs to be targeted point by point I by agree. point. I agree. And we did. And Your Honor, that's the whole reason we took a pain, so painstaking time to confront Mr. Murphy with these different statements. We did the same thing and that with other witnesses. We have to go through each line. So we'll do everything we can to move it along. And then this trial's a circus. Taxpayers in Georgia should be fucking pissed. The start ones, I'm sure, is not to have a flowing kind of circumstance where the jury can really evaluate what's going on in that room. He wants us to start and stop a minute here, a minute there. That's not happening because, not unless the court makes me, but because that's not fair and that's not, that does not serve the interest of the jury actually seeing the truth. I mean, it's inadmissible statements. Uh, it's, I take the L, Miss Love. Some shit can't be shown to the jury. A whole lot of arguing about what Walter D.K. Murphy said and what this other person said. Obviously, I think some of it shouldn't be shown at all because it's literally hearsay, but comment down below what you guys think. Hit subscribe. Love you guys. Peace out.